Are you sick and tired of being... prescription for your life. Get ready for your daily dose of Healthy Talk Radio, the show that's empowering your health. And now, here's America's health and lifestyle coach. Live, do you want to get well? This is the show where your health is your wealth. Thriving is more important than just surviving, and the only thing lost are those unwanted pounds. This is Healthy Talk Radio from heart disease, aches and pains, to even your basic cough and sneeze. This is Talk Radio that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. It's a new prescription for I Knew You America. This show, what is about you? It's about whatever you're dealing with. So think about it, diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, headaches, the list goes on and on. seems like when you ask somebody, how is it going, and they talk about their health, they can just give you a whole laundry list. Well, that's because our bodies break down over a period of time if we make wrong choices. So what does it come down to? It comes down to making better lifestyle choices, and no one's in control of that but you. I can't do it for you, your friends, your family members, your coworkers. No one can take responsibility for your health but you. So the question is, do you want to get well? That's the key. So the key is, and I really think the toughest part for most people, whenever you're struggling with any kind of health challenge, you have to come down to the decision that you want to get well, that you don't want to stay where you are, you don't want to be stuck where you are, that you want to go to the next level with your health and with your life. And on this show, that's what we want to help you do. You can send me an email. We'll be glad to make it part of the show. And we had Estelle in Detroit, Michigan, send an email in. She said, what do I do about dry elbows? No lotion that I use really seems to help. Well, that's because most conditions, especially with cracked and dry skin, don't really come from the outside in. They come from the inside out. So when your gut is healthy, when your body is not deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, a lot of times you won't get the cracking in the skin. Our diet's pretty heavy in omega-6 fats. And because of that, we have omega-3 imbalance. And that's why we need greater amounts of eating foods like fish and almonds and walnuts and all those things are good. And they do contain omega-3s in them, but they do contain a lot of omega-6s. And so because of that, the fish oils tend to be such a superior source of getting our fatty acids, omega-3s in, and we need those to counterbalance that. If you're heavy on omega-6s, you'll get a lot of things like cracking in the heels, um, those sorts of things. So you'll know that you'll need to crank up the omega-3s to counterbalance that, and that makes a big difference. It makes a big difference for brain chemistry, uh, for instabilities like bipolar, ADHD, depression, anxiety, all those sorts of things. So it can play a big, big role. So those are some key, I guess, symptoms if you do have any of those conditions that you might want to start thinking about dealing with something like vitamin D and looking at things like omega-3 fats and increasing those within your diet. Hope that helps. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. Let's go to Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Uh, what I'm worried about now is I have hepatitis C with a uh, fatty liver. And... You were mentioning them before about almonds, which I'm eating. Sure. You mentioned uh, they're bad for viral. Yeah, they're really high in L-arginine. Mm-hmm. And so the L-arginine, it can be a little bit tricky. But, you know, you just there's so many other nuts out there, hazelnuts, Brazil nuts, walnuts, cashews. They're not, they're not high in arginine. So you just make a switch. Okay, so uh, get away from the uh, almonds and go to, say, walnuts? Yeah, walnuts are great. Walnuts are great. They're not going to be as high in arginine. But, I mean, you got a bigger fish to fry with hep C. I mean, the foods themselves, remember, it's very, very slight on how it can affect things like viral infections. It's all about now, you know, getting the immune system settled down, get the virus to go dormant as much as possible. Are you taking any medication? Do they have you in treatment? Uh, no, I was going to go on. Uh... Oh, I forgot the name. Starts with an I. Oh, interferon? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, 
the doctor said I balanced myself out pretty well. So they called that off. Now I'm doing, uh, well, I take a lot of vitamins. I take vitamin C, uh, milk thistle, garlic. Uh, Those are all good. But no medication. Yeah, that's good. Well, and, and just keep in mind that, you know, just like we talked about L-arginine being an amino acid that's found in foods that can stimulate viral activity, L-lysine is the opposite. So L-Y-S-I-N-E, lysine will actually come in and can help. I mean, hep C is a pretty big animal, but L-lysine can come in and help create, kind of calm things down, chill things out, and help it to go a little bit more on the dormant side. So that might be something you want to look into as well. But your foods, of course, are going to be important. I would look at vitamin D levels, make sure your numbers are between 70 and 90 on a blood test. Uh, it's kind of like one of those things, like even you, you can feel the effects of it, fatty liver and all, is don't let it get you down. Keep pushing through. Try to keep your normal routine, daily routine, and that does a lot just for your mindset, but it also does a lot in dealing with any kind of health challenge, especially like Hep C. 888 7272 Lines are open with questions about your health. Tom, you're next with us. Hi, Tom. Hello. How can I help? My daughter uh, has got what the doctor calls dyspepsia. Okay. She's taken Nexium, and I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for something besides that. How old is she? She's 22, 21. Okay. Has she been under a lot of stress? Is this something brand new that just got diagnosed? Um, it's recent in the last several months. She is in college full-time and working full-time. So, yeah, she's got a lot of stress. She's got a lot on her, yeah. Is she overweight? Does she eat a lot of junk food? No, she's been eating healthy for probably a, a year or so, uh, paying more attention to her diet. And, okay. You know. When you're under a lot of stress, just a couple of things, reactions that can happen in the body, one of two things can happen. In the stomach, we produce hydrochloric acid. It helps break down proteins. It also helps to break down... Uh, fats and is just really important. If you don't break things down very well because you're lacking hydrochloric acid due to a lot of stress, then you can do a couple of things. One is apple cider vinegar has been used for a long time and it can help stimulate more hydrochloric acid with the meals. So kind of the old uh, home remedy, if you will, has always been to take like apple cider vinegar with your meals, whether it's a spoonful of it or whatever the, the bottle will say whenever you go pick it up at a health food store. That's been known to help, and it does work. It does stimulate that. It helps break the foods down and all that. But here's a little trick, and a lot of times we think it's lack of acid or too much, and we don't really know. So you start using Nexium, and which is standard of care. I mean, they're, they're doing the right thing. But I know you're wanting to look in the more natural side. So typically what you do is when you take apple cider vinegar, vinegar, one of two things will happen. Either she will feel better or she'll feel worse. If she feels worse, she has too much acid. So there's a whole different protocol for that. But if she doesn't, then you can look at things like betaine hydrochloride. They can get it in supplement form. There are proteolytic enzymes that can be helpful. And so there's several types of supplements. If you go to a health food store, they can walk you through. That can be a great benefit. Uh, grains, I will tell you, like breads and pastas and cereals and crackers are a big flare-up to people that deal with any type of stomach acid issue. So she might want to look at eliminating certain foods from her diet as she works with her doctor and all that to come up with a game plan to see if just something as simple as cutting out wheat from the diet could be the root cause. We'll be right back. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Our preferred wellness providers are healthcare providers in your area. 
that believe the same way we do. Nutrition and lifestyle-based care. And this network of docs is growing like crazy around the country. Excited to see it grow. So if you need help, you let us know. And our team members will be able to get you to the right place. These docs are unbelievable to see them come on board and make a huge difference in so many people's lives. Cancer and cola caramel coloring. Yep, that's exactly what I said. So you know the dark color that our colas have if you're a cola drinker. Well, they're saying that now lab tests have commissioned, been commissioned by a consumer group to find that Coke and Pepsi carry a caramel coloring chemical that causes cancer in lab animals. So the chemical is called 4-MI, or actually they call it 4 methyl Medazole. And so it forms the caramel coloring. So they don't use natural caramel coloring, but it has a chemical process that involves ammonia. So while toxicology studies show that the 4-MI can cause cancer in lab animals, they say it's not clear if it causes in, in humans or if it's a human carcinogen. So they're still doing tests on that, but the Center for Science and Public Interest in February of 2011 Petition that the FDA to ban this kind of caramel coloring and also wanted the cosmetic additive renamed chemically modified caramel coloring or ammonia sulfite processed caramel coloring. And, you know, you think about this. Here's the deal. All I need to know is that it causes cancer, period. I don't care where it causes cancer. I don't care if it causes cancer in an ant. If it's a chemical that's going to hurt my body, that's all I need to know. I don't need to wait around for a human study. Why would you even want to mess around with that? If it can cause a normal cell to turn abnormal wherever, then that's the last thing I want to put in my body. Don't you agree? So it's just unbelievable. So Coke and Pepsi with the, of course, now you're going to know because the article like this came out. Now they're going to change some things. And it's not, I guarantee you, expense-wise, it is not that big a deal to put in natural caramel coloring if they're going to do that. I don't know why they don't use cola nut extract because that actually adds the color and it's made from cola nut, which is where the whole cola thing comes from. Not that you need to be drinking sodas anyway. I'm just saying. So anyway, they said that the the CPS or the CSPI commission test detected the 4MI in regular and diet Coke and Pepsi products. And they said there's a, milli, a millionth of a gram per 12 ounce, ounce can, but it's enough to potentially cause danger. Let's say the major supplier of caramel coloring to the beverage industry already has altered the chemical process used to make this product. The reformulated product will comply with the California benchmark, even though the company strongly disagrees with the California assessment, the new product will be used throughout the U.S. In an email to WebMD, the FDA says it is working with manufacturers to determine the actual usage of these caramel colors the amount of 4-MI found in colas and other food products. While the CSPI suggests the 4-MI is causing cancer in thousands of Americans who drink a lot of cola, the FDA says few people should worry. Well, be interesting to see as this comes down the pipeline just because of the potential. Like I said, if it causes cancer, I don't know about you, I wouldn't want to put it in my body, that's for sure. 888 is the phone number. You give me a call. We'll talk about your health and talk about your life. We're going to Eric now. Hi, Eric. Welcome to the show. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little information about myself. Um, first of all, I am um, a older old truck driver, and I don't get to exercise as much as I need to. I'm 40 years old. I'm 5'9". And I've went in the past two years from 160 pounds to 178 pounds. Okay. Um, with that said, picking up that sort of weight, a year ago, I didn't have any uh, intestinal problems. Now I'm having, like, gastro problems uncontrollably. And right. I'm trying to figure out some kind of way of dealing with that um it seemed like it's getting worse and i was told that it could be anxiety or inflammation and right now um i was given uh different things to try over the counter and it seemed like none of those um 
so none of that medication is working. What have you tried so far? And I guess, did you go to a doctor that recommended this? When you say you've been uh, I, told, uh, you've been instructed, who, to, who's taking care of this so far? I, I went to the emergency room at Oslo, and okay. the doctor that was on call at, at night, he um, examined me, and he um, pushed in on my stomach in different places, and he said that um, I'm not a big guy. But I do have what he called a a stomach punch, and because it's kind of hard a little bit, he said that could be come from um um it could be coming from um waste. And well, it God. could, but a lot of times, a lot of times, if you've been eating poorly, like if your diet's not that good, and you're probably going to have a lot of things going on, like you could have yeast in the digestive tract, you could not have the right amount of bacteria in the digestive tract, you could have a lot of stress due to your job, that could increase cortisol levels. Most truck drivers, just because of the hours and sitting all day and the stress of driving, have a lot of cortisol. The more cortisol you have, which is a stress hormone that's produced from the adrenal glands can increase your body and cause it to have more body fat that will store itself around the midsection. So, I mean, that could be one of the reasons that you have that little pudge you're talking about and just eating a poor diet. So, I mean, there's a whole protocol. And if you're on the road as a truck driver that we'll need to kind of get rounded up. So I'll tell you what, we're going to this break. We'll come out. We'll talk about a game plan when you've got digestive issues and don't really know what to do, kind of the root cause of it and what, what to do from that, because if you've gone to your, well, you went to the ER, but even though you've gone to more of a, an urgent care type situation and they just gave you some baseline things to do, I do think you need to follow it with more of a family physician that can kind of coach you along the way. So we'll talk about that in just a moment when we come back. More Healthy Talk Radio, just a moment. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open. Welcome back to the show, 888 Talking to Eric, going to the break as a truck driver, and just looking for really coming up with a game plan, dealing with some digestive issues, Never really had those before. They've kind of come on here recently, and the doctors really don't know really what it is. Got a little kind of a pudge going in the front, a little spare tire area, but more in the front. And been to the doctors, not a whole lot of answers, and you're really wanting to come up with a game plan. When you're driving a lot, Eric, and you're, you've got that truck driving lifestyle, diet is typically not the best. So, I mean, would you say, are you the kind of guy that packs your food, carries it with you, or do you just do what you can when you're on the road? I just do what I can out on the road. I stop in the restaurant, so I just grab something that I can quickly get in and out of a location. If I'm, It depends on the amount of time I have spare. Okay, I got it. Well, I think you're at a point now, you're 40, and so you're at a point in life now where you know, in your 20s and 30s you can kind of do what you want a lot of times and get away with it for the most part. But once you start cracking that 40 number, the body will start changing. If you don't start treating it right or over the long period of time, and you make poor choices for a period of time, then it'll start letting you know it's not real fired up about how you've been handling things, if you know what I mean. So the best thing to do typically is to get started on a good anti-inflammatory diet, and that's, of course, similar to the one in my book, Empowering Your Health. I think that's a great way to go just because it gives you a good guideline. Everything is real simple to follow. You'll do equal amounts of lean-quality proteins, like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs. And, of course, on the road, you're not going to get everything organic, but at least you can make better choices. I mean, you can eat baked chicken over fried chicken. You can get baked fish over, you know, fried items. You can do broccoli instead of French fries. I mean, just common sense. I mean, even at truck stops, places like that, you can actually, even though the vegetables may not be the best, you can still get some decent food items. So it's about really coming up with a game plan and then having good, healthy snacks with you in the road so you're not craving a bunch of junk. You can have packed fruit with you. You can have all the nuts, you know, and you just can mix nuts in a bag 
where you can grab a handful of those, drink plenty of water, and have fruit and that sort of thing for snacks. I mean, there's a lot you can do to come up with a game plan. But in my book, I've got all the foods listed out, the ones that will kind of deal with more inflammation in the body, the ones that will take it out. So there's there's several things to do. On the exercise side, I think it's important too. Cortisol is that stress hormone I was talking about that when it gets elevated, it can really put on the pounds around the spare tire area. And if you don't manage cortisol very well, meaning if your sleep hours are off and you don't eat healthy and you know, you're not exercising, it can really throw them. And it can cause you to have abrupt sleep patterns. It can cause body fat gain. It can cause your brain cells to decline. So there's a lot that it really can do to the body. So cortisol phosphatidylserine is a supplement they make, and it has been shown along with green tea to really block excess cortisol production and be a real asset to your health. So you might want to look into some of that. I mean, it's very cheap, inexpensive. The health food stores have it and all that kind of deal, and it can be really helpful. So a couple of things to think about. But coming up with a solid game plan, whether you pack your food or you just pack snacks with you, and that's really a good way to go. And, and working on the cortisol, you can get some stress testing done, saliva or blood testing with your physician, and they can check. But cortisol typically is the culprit and you might, again, have some yeast-related issues. When you cut out grains and you cut out dairy products from your diet, you can notice a big difference immediately. I mean, literally within a week, whether or not you had food allergies or not. Because if your energy levels go up and you feel better, bloating and all that sort of thing goes down in the stomach, then you know you're probably dealing with some kind of allergic reaction to certain foods. So looking into all that, I think, and coming up with a solid game plan will be key. Carry some little bands with you. Walk uh, once a day minimum for 20 minutes in a parking lot. Just keep walking. Just take a long trip around and really push it because it's one of the best things you can do for circulation, for burning calories, and for keeping your weight where you need to. So that little 18 pounds that you gained, that could be one of the root causes just because you're not getting the exercise that you need. And maybe at 32, your body could metabolize everything, but now at 40, it can't. Also get the blood work done, check on your testosterone. Low testosterone can be a key, too. Of course, that results from low dopamine. The two go hand in hand. Hope that helps. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. You can also go online and shoot me an email. I'll be glad to make it part of the show. Let's go to Matt. Hi, Matt. Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my call. You got it. What's going on? All right. I have got a question. It's about weight loss. Um, okay. Never had a problem with the weight till about a year and a half ago. Uh, I'm 27, by the way. Um, always been an in-shape guy. I'm still a very active person, but over the past year and a half, I have went from about uh, an in-shape uh, 210 to about 280 in about a year and a half, and I don't know what I'm doing different. So you're, uh, let me get this right. So you're exercising the same, you're eating the same, living the same lifestyle, and you've had this major increase in weight gain. The only thing that has changed is my ability as to when I can eat because I, I changed job positions about a year ago. And the job that I have now, uh, I don't have the ability to eat when I want to. I kind of like, I usually I can eat breakfast very early in the mornings. I work, you know, probably 10 hours a day. So my lunch break usually falls between 12 and 2. Okay. And I don't have the ability to eat supper again until I get off work, and that's usually about 8.30. So I'm eating two hours before I go to bed. And my problem is I don't have the ability to eat before then. So what can I – I've tried, you know, not getting, you know, full meals at that time of the day and trying, like, grab, you know, power bars or something to eat to kind of make me not so hungry when I get off. But Yeah, I understand. What, what about – your exercise routine, if you're working 10 hours a day, when do you exercise? Usually I do that uh, sometimes in the evenings, you know, when I get home or on my off days, you know, I'm a, I love to mountain bike, so I'm either mountain biking or jogging. Um, this is going to sound weird. I still feel like I'm a pretty in shape person because I don't have a problem hopping on a mountain bike and riding 20 miles. It doesn't, you know, I don't get completely exhausted doing that. I can go run three miles with no problem. I'm just overweight. I would get some blood work done first and foremost. Just because you want to check out all your hormone levels, 
pituitary gland is probably just not even barely functioning. That's what produces our, our growth hormone levels. And when the anterior pituitary gland is not working well, that's kind of the master gland for all the other hormone systems. And that's why it's good to have that checked out and just getting some, some basic blood work. I'd check testosterone, check your thyroid, make sure everything's okay. A lot of times they'll just do a basic run on the thyroid, make sure it's all right. But I would check for autoimmune, which really goes, it's called TPO antibodies or thyroid peroxidase antibodies. That way they'll see if there's a potential issue within the thyroid that could be causing it to go slow. So those kind of items can be very helpful and, and a lot of times can be a secret reason why somebody has a sudden uh, weight gain issue. Now, if you're working 10 hours a day, you definitely need to be eating small meals throughout the day. I would recommend meal replacement shakes uh, at lifestyleresearch.org. There is a food balance meal replacement, and it's hormone-free and antibiotic-free. So the whey protein that they use is probably the cleanest on the planet, and it's it's unbelievable. It's called food balance. You can go to lifestyleresearch.org and and see that it's it's to my my opinion it's the best so those are a couple things so you know you could put that in a shaker bottle and when you're at work all you got to do is just fill it up with water shake it down the hatch and literally in 30 seconds you're back at work and those are a couple of ways to to get some nutrients in you could do bags of nuts and fruit i'm a big fan of those however you can do that as fast as you can or you know, eat it in five minutes, but taking those small little eating breaks, you have to carve that out. So whoever you work for or whatever, you've got to have small breaks like that where you can put the food down. It's just a matter of discipline for yourself and just, you know, packing the foods. Maybe one, you know, on your off day, you're saying maybe that's when you get everything together for the week, your snacks and everything. So you've got everything you need. But at the end of the day, that all of those items are really important because you need to make sure that you can, you can get in a routine. It's about keeping constant calories coming in, the good kinds, and it keeps your metabolism revved up. It keeps all the hormone systems working great. If you go, and you're, this is a great example, too, with what you just said. If you go hours and hours every day and don't eat, like, for example, you just eat maybe a small breakfast and don't eat again until late at night and you have this long day that goes by, your body goes into a starvation mode. Even though it's less calories, it will slow the body down to a screeching halt. And it's incredible what it can do. I've seen people gain weight that didn't want to. You know, they just they were working so hard, and they just felt like if they didn't eat, that they would lose the weight. And, yeah, that is true. At some point, you will go past that, but you're going to burn up all your muscle tissue, and then you'll end up being a skinny, fat person, if that makes any sense. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you get everything balanced to make sure all the hormone systems are where they need to be. So FDA rejects a new combo drug for cholesterol. Go figure on that one. New combination cholesterol-lowering drug has been rejected. The drug was called MK653C. It included a combination of Pfizer's cholesterol-lowering drug Lipitor and Merck's cholesterol drug Zedia, or Zadia, as we say it. So the two medicines work in totally different ways to lower cholesterol, the Associated Press reported with the FDA put the can on the drug, so it's not going to go through. I've got a great idea if you're dealing with cholesterol. Whatever your doctor's telling you, of course, stick with it, but maybe mention to them about eating eggs. They're going to think you're crazy, but eating whole eggs every single day, one of the best ways to lower cholesterol because it has two components in the egg yolk, choline, and lecithin. Go do some research on those two words, and you will be shocked at what nature has already and God has already put in eggs to be healthy for us and for maintain healthy cholesterol levels. We'll be right back. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Our preferred wellness providers or health care providers in your area that believe the same way we do. So if you need help with nutrition and lifestyle-based care, just call the number, 888 
283-7272. Go online and check out all about it. But these are docs in your area that are in our network that believe the same way we do, nutrition and lifestyle-based care. And they can really take you from where you are in your current state of health to where you need to be. So a lot of great folks, and it's growing across this country as the show's growing, the network is growing, and it's incredible to see the great folks that are coming on board. Tammy, you're next with us on the show. How can I help? In December, I had a problem with my throat all at once. It felt like a Charlie horse was in the left side of my throat. And I actually went to the emergency room because it happened three times. Um, They told me it was a gland in my throat that produced saliva that had become stopped up. And I still have problems. And when I open my mouth, I can only see my right tonsil. Hmm. Okay, and so did they tell you to do anything, or they just... um, The doctor that I saw that night um, just kind of was laughed it off and said to get some sour candy and hold it to the left side of my mouth, and then it would help produce the saliva that I needed to swallow, because I couldn't couldn't talk, I couldn't swallow anything. Hmm. And I actually thought I had something lodged in my throat. Sure, oh yeah. And and this happened how long ago? It happened December the 6th, this past right. December. And so how are you doing now? Well, I have, um, I can tell it every day that it doesn't feel right. I have some days where that it's difficult to swallow without me wetting my my throat, you know, drinking something to, um, I, I, it, it feels, even now I can tell that it's not, It's not right. And if I put my two fingers under my jaw next to the jawbone, it's right there. Okay. So that's typically a parotid gland. Yes. And it gets backed up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parotid gland can get backed up. And that's why I told you the the old sour candy deal is is kind of an old, old way to handle that. And there's nothing really they can do. So he's right on that. So it just, does it feel, still feel like it's, does it feel hard or no, is it sore? Tender. It's tender. Uh-huh. And have you been doing anything sour to keep working on that area? Um, occasionally. I'm, I really don't like candy Yeah, at all. I, you don't really need yeah, to do no. that. Lemons yeah, work very well. Yeah, and I don't well. like cold it in my mouth because of my teeth. So if I no. have to, I do. The first couple of weeks, I, I did sour candy continuously almost. You don't but want to do the candy when I need it. Yeah, I would. I mean, one thing that works really great when you get a block of parotid gland. I'm not a big fan of the whole sour candy thing. That's just something that you know you you hear a lot of family docs will tell you, and it's not a bad thing. It's just I'm like you. I don't like getting all the sugar. So uh, if you do a whole lemon squeezed, uh, actually two whole lemons and about eight ounces of water, it's a lot. But you do that and kind of drink that slowly drink it every morning, it'll do two things. One, it helps push and detoxify the liver. It stimulates phase one and phase two liver detoxification. So that, which is a great thing. And so you do that in the mornings, but also it's going to really, really work on those parotid glands, getting secreting saliva and and that sort of thing. So the other question I had, though, I'm curious, is it only in your throat and that one side that bothers you, or does your whole mouth get really dry? Um... My whole mouth does get dry, and and I really don't realize it until, and I work like the guy before, I work 10 and 12 hour days, and I can be working, and all at once it's just difficult to swallow, and that's when I realize I've got to wet my throat. Okay. I would go back and have, I mean, do they want to do any testing at all, or do they just kind of leave it oh. at that? He just kind of laughed it off. It was an older doctor, and mm-hmm. um, I was really frightened. And but after after it went through that, it was a, like a Charlie horse in my throat. And you know, after it eased up and I calmed down, and maybe a good hour later in the emergency room, I got my voice back. You know, he came in a couple of times, and he just laughed it off and just said, "Stop on the way home and get you some sour candy. You'll be good." And it has gotten better since, really. Well, you know, it has to the point where that I don't have that 
that Charlie horse feeling because when that happened, I had to tilt my head back, and and uh, you could feel a knot there. But now it's but just I more subtle. Attack, now it's just more that. subtle, and it bothers you. I'm sorry. Now it's just more subtle. Yes, yes, and always, always there. I can tell it all the time. Yeah, I would just, I would actually go and, and maybe see someone else, find a different family doctor and go see them just to chat with them so they can examine it. Again, this is one of those things where we can talk about it. And I can tell you a lot of, you know, might be's and could be's. But when it comes down to that, I, I'm really comfortable. I think you ought to just see it, maybe a different doctor, get a different take on it and let them do a, just a basic exam. They may do some blood work and all that. But that can, that can play a big role. There's, there's some conditions with dry mouth and all you may want to have them test for sodrins, but it's that's a shot in the dark. I mean, there's a lot of other symptoms that go along with that. It's kind of an autoimmune-based reaction in the body. So anyway, I, I wouldn't really worry too much about you know something of that extreme, but it is one of the main symptoms with what you're talking about. Uh, but again, if he wasn't worried about it, I would just find someone else just to give you peace of mind more than anything. And sometimes it takes time to shake out. Look at the lemon water. Lemon water will help tremendously. Plus, it's got a lot of other great health benefits. But it's another hour in the charts. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together, we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to a show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. We're diagnosing hope one person at a time. This show is designed to provide accurate information of a general nature on the subject matter covered. And given with the understanding that neither host nor the station is engaged with rendering any form of medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information is not approved by the FDA and is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease. To experience more of ASA RX audio, visit us at asarx.com. 